Weiss invited everyone to stay at her house as a way of showing thanks for John's intervention for her family affairs. Her friends explored the mansion while John wandered the halls. But to his displeasure, he met the most aggravating member of the Schnee household, Jock, who let a homeless man in the house. Guards. Winter. He is a guest in this house. Jock. Winter, surprised to see you here of all places, aren't you supposed to be with the military? Winter, I may no longer be an heiress, but this is still my home. That man is an instructor at Atlas Academy. Jock looks him up and down. Jock, he certainly doesn't look the part. John, that's a skewed way to judge someone, based on their appearance. Jock, if you want the part you got to dress the part, and you look like you belong on the streets. John was in control, he despised this poor excuse of a human, but he is not carried away by his emotions. He just huffed and walked to his study. Winter, sorry about him. John, I've seen my fair share of people like him, and I know 20 people who are worth more than one of him. Winter showed him the guest room as he was joined by Glinda afterwards. Glinda, I heard you were busy. John, busy cleaning up a mess. Glinda, food fight? John, food fight. Then a knock came from the door as Klein peeks in. Klein, dinner is ready. The two stood as they freshened up for dinner. It was a very large table and everyone was there being rowdy as Jacques was really annoyed. Willow joined finally sober. They ate and discussed some business and politics in the adult section. John noticed Jacques was sneaking glances at Glinda, especially her blouse's window. John motioned his hand and made Jacques' spoon twist and spill hot soup on his groin. He stood up and left to go clean up. Glinda looked to John, who had his eyes closed and sipping some soup. Willow glanced at the rogue knight. After the meal, everyone went to their rooms. John was stopped by Willow, who thanked him in helping her with her problem. John told her she's welcome and advised her to do better for her family for he knows what it feels like to lose time being with family. Jean came to greet him and asked if he wanted to have a family reunion and he reluctantly agreed. She was gonna set it up on Atlas so John's work won't be disrupted. He thanked her and the two hugged and said goodnight as Glinda joined him. The next day, Jean entered the room to wake John up but was red in the face as he saw both him and Glinda naked. Glinda shrieked as John yelled at her to get lost. The two looked at each other bashfully that they really went to the next step after so long. The two got dressed and went back to their duties as everyone else went to their classes. Things were proceeding as normal until a call from Ironwood got John to investigate some issues in Mantle. As Robin Hill was increasingly butting heads with the SDC, he went to meet with the lady herself. As he arrives, he was welcomed with apprehension as they didn't know who he was. Robin, who are you and what is your business here? John, I'm under the request of General Ironwood to investigate the disturbance here in Mantle. Nay, it's nothing but beat it, S from the corporation. Fiona's ears drooped as she waved at him. Robin, if you're here in the general's orders, then tell him we need the dust, he promised us. John pulls out his scroll and contacted Ironwood. They spoke for a moment. John, he sent you fresh shipments yesterday. Robin, bullshit. We never received anything of the sort. John, can you tell me where do these shipments pass by? Fiona, a few outposts and a village in Mantle. John, take me there. They all looked at each other and nods as they escorted John through the small city. He noticed the poor living conditions. John, why is this city in such a horrid state? Robin, most of the resources of Mantle goes to the lofty elites in Atlas. John, and none of you ever voiced this problem out? Robin, who would listen to the poor dregs of society. All that talks in this place is money or force. John's eyes narrowed as he looked around. Then he heard marching. Robin and the happy huntresses were puzzled by this. No one comes to this zone. 
It was a group of soldiers wearing the SDC logo. SDC Captain, listen here. We're here for our annual cut. If you do not have anything to give, our protection ends. Fiona, racketeering? In this impoverished place, Robin clenches her teeth. John, what happened here? Poor woman, asked the Atlassian Council. Fiona, I'm sorry, but if you don't like the council, why not vote someone else? Poor woman, it's never that easy. John steps forward. John, leave this place and never return. SDC Soldier 1, who the hell is that? SDC S2, a huntsman? John, we are here conducting an invest ion. SDC Captain, investigation? There is nothing to investigate here. This is Atlas territory, and we can do whatever we want. John lifts his mantle and revealed his weapon. SDC Captain, stand down Huntsman. You're supposed to be serving the council. John, no. We serve the people of the kingdoms. SDC Captain, so be it. Fire. Robin ordered the civilians to duck for cover as they leap into action firing back. John blocks their shots, keeping the people safe, but the volume of fire was too much for him to stop at all. Some people got hit, but only on non-vital areas. The happy huntresses were getting tired blocking and firing back. The captain raised his hand, and the firing stopped. John looked at the people and saw the scared look on the children's faces as some of the people, even their parents, got hurt. SDC captain, I will destroy this village and make an example of it. None shall defy the council they wise. Asterisk, choke, asterisk. John raised his hand as his eyes began to turn slightly yellow. The happy huntresses were shocked to see such an ability. The men tried to fire, but before they could, John rips the guns out of their hands as he threw them away. Some drawn their backups, but John blocks their shots and pushes the other hard enough, smashing the through walls. John, Corruption like yours must be eradicated. But he turns off his lightsaber and lets him go as the yellow fades from his eyes. John, death is too good for you and your lot. You will answer for your crimes before the courts. Take them away. Robin and the others were perplexed. Here was a man who stood up against the fearsome power of the rich. And we know the wealthy always get what they want. John is in for a battle he has never known.